Welcome to Outside the Fame. I'm Jamie Parker. We traveled over 1,300 miles to Alabama, home of former Red Sox righty Jake Peavy. The former two-time World Series champion and Cy Young winner owns this gorgeous 5,500-acre ranch called Southern Falls. It's a beautiful combination of his love of music and baseball. So come join us, y'all. Pitcher Jake Peavy was only with the Red Sox a short time, but it was a time he will never forget. In 2013, the Red Sox acquired him mid-season and then went on to win the World Series. It was a team that went from worst to first and one that united a city still reeling from the Boston Marathon bombings that April. After a stellar 15-year career, Jake retired in 2016 and moved back to Mobile, Alabama, where he grew up. There he is raising his four sons and has become a big part of the community. He also spends time at Southern Falls, his ranch a couple hours north of Mobile. We recently traveled there and caught up with Jake. I looked it up, Catherine, population 22. <laughs> That's where we are, we're in Catherine, Alabama. So did you have this all built here for a reason? Well, you know, we came up and started hunting here. This all okay. kind of just happened. Um, in, in Alabama, I grew up every weekend in, in the fall uh, and in spring too. Um, you go hunting with, with the men mm -hmm. and you have these hunting clubs, almost like golf clubs. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, mm -hmm. I've had small little pieces of property uh, in this area along the way. Mm -hmm. And then I was able to buy one big piece of property here um, that touch the Alabama River. I wanted to bring my family and, and a lot of my family to be able to come and, and us have holidays and, and, and um, really just spend time with each other. Uh, some of the best memories I had as a child were family reunions. Mm -hmm. That's a yeah. lost thing in today's world, but it was so much fun for me as a kid to, mm -hmm. to get and travel to a town, be in a place, and um, this allows my, my kids to um, and a lot of my family that I didn't get to see mm -hmm. to Bring come in together. right we yeah. would spend the winter holidays here and everybody would get to come here and we'd have enough room for everybody um, so it was just a glorified hunting camp that we mm -hmm. my parents end up loving it and falling in love with it wanting to be up here full time mm -hmm. and then me and my family end up moving here and, and going um, uh, to school and with our kids in the community for uh, a few years before we just moved to Mobile. I mean, it is spectacular, and you got everything here. I mean, everything that you would need. You know, as a baseball player, in those eight, nine months that you're yeah. in season, you're in pretty high demand. Yeah. And, um, and, and all that's eyes a are on you beautiful all the time. thing. Yeah, I gotcha. This was just a wonderful retreat um, mm -hmm. to where if somebody was coming up that dirt road, I had invited them and, mm -hmm. <laughs> and gave them some directions. And even at that point in time, right. they were going to still have a hard time getting here. So mm -hmm. just the privacy, the peace, and, and then getting a chance to uh, a lot of different buddies and artists that, that are uh, higher profile could always come here and it'd be a safe place, um, so to speak. When we come back to Outside the Fame, we'll talk about Jake's passion for music and visit his studio back in Mobile. Outside the Fame is presented by Scholar Athletes, supporting academic achievement through athletics. I've been involved in the zone for the past two years. It's been a great experience. It's just basically another opportunity to be successful at your school. At three o'clock, I want to go straight home. When I go home, I just want to sleep, either play video games or chill with my friends, basically. The zone gives me an opportunity for at least an hour in there or maybe two hours before school to get your work done and be done with it basically by the deadline. The staff, they always come around, tell people come in the zone, do your work. It's always good to have someone on your back 
to push you whenever you're down or someone to talk to whenever it's needed. Mobile, Alabama is on the Gulf Coast and is the third largest city in the state. It has a rich baseball tradition and has produced five Hall of Famers. It also has an ever-growing music scene, one of the many reasons Jake Peavy has come home. Well, I woke up this morning, it was drizzle and rain. Hey, around the corn, come a passenger train. Mobile is, is turning into a really cool place and, and something that's uh, really representative of, of what's going on on the Gulf Coast. It's something different than the rest of the part of the state. It's a lot alike in the culture and, and the history, but, but down on the coast of Alabama, it's a very brackish, progressive environment. We bought a piece of property that already had a makeshift studio in it and it just made sense. If we were going to love and care about a music scene for us to open a studio. So it's been wonderful just supporting the local scene and really making the business model work on your local talent, not having to go to Nashville to make industry standard records. You have a favorite type of music to play? I, I love it all. I, I grew up on uh, country music and, and I have a Fourth, I have <laughs> my fourth son's named Waylon, and I'm not ashamed to say that uh, Waylon Jennings has, a, has had a, a huge role in, in, uh, in my music, and uh, I, I love to call him Waylon in, in, in regard uh, uh, to, to Waylon Jennings and think about like my childhood and growing up with my father, listening, grandfather, listening to all that stuff. Bruce Springsteen has been somebody that I look at and, mm -hmm. and, and just revere in a way that I don't know if it gets any better, singer, songwriter, performer. I'm into a lot of that. I, I went out and, and, and left Boston and I loved the dead in my time in San Francisco. Love being a part of that community and family. That music really touches all genres of music if you listen to it. Mm -hmm. So um, like I get a chance to, to love it all. Just like the place I came in. Did you pick up a guitar? When did you start playing and singing and all that? When did you get involved in that? You know, not until I got to the big leagues. I always loved really? music. I snuck in these stairwells with Tim Flannery, our third base coach. He was from Kentucky, but raised in California and just had a, a Graham Parsons love, a bluegrass love, stuff that, that I, I certainly uh, knew. And he would put that guitar down, I would pick it up and go, teach me how to play just one of those. And, and um, wasn't long, he had a guitar before a road trip in my locker. And he said, if you learn how to tune this and understand how to tune it, I'll teach you how to play it. You came in a little earlier when you were hanging around with your son playing. I mean, that's pretty special. Uh, talk about one of those lifetime moments where you and your oldest son opened up for Willie Nelson. We did, yeah. It was um, truly a, a moment that if you think back on how I started playing guitar and I really just played throughout my career, it, it just became my best friend in my hotel room. As time went on, you, you, you include some other people and, and uh, maybe have a sing along with, with some of your buddies. To pass that along to my children, my oldest jumped right along with the guitar and um, has come a long way in, in a short time. Stay with us on Outside the Fame as we see what else Jake is doing for the city of Mobile. And we'll get talking baseball as well. played for four major league teams over 15 seasons. Ten of those years were on the West Coast, but he never forgot where he came from. So now in coming full circle, he's giving back to the young people of Alabama. Anybody in here, raise your hand, can tell me what they think they might want to be when they grow up? Yes, ma'am. I want to be an artist and a singer. Oh, look at you go. You got it all covered. Yes, sir. A what? The President of the United States of America. Go on and dream big, buddy. Just talk about the Jake Peavy Foundation, when it got started, created, and why. Right. Well, we got started in 2012, and, and, and the reason why was, um, you know, I had a financial advisor who, who things 
fell south in a, in a bad way. Mm -hmm. um, the best thing that he ever did for me was uh, encourage me to, that we might want to start a foundation, that we were giving a lot of money away as we were playing. And, and he did say one day, Jake, you're going to want to uh, do something that ensures your sustainability in this world of giving. And, and uh, if this makes you happy, let's create a, an entity that, that will ensure that you and your, your kids and your family can continue to do this. So that's really how it was born. We're all on one team here. We're on the home team. Today, the boys and girls were painting ceiling tiles. Now, they could have painted anything they wanted to, but it didn't take long for us to notice a common theme. Yeah, 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 girl, yeah, girl. You gotta be really brave to get out of space. You know that? Simone, and I spell that how it is. I'll tell you what, you're about the fastest worker. You might be the president. Yes, that's super cool. She was not like the other girls, other girls. We know we love and want to impact our children, and, and, and they are certainly our future and youth. Uh, there's nothing quite moves me like that. We're involved with, with veterans as well, but uh, giving uh, kids um, a better chance and, and teaching them some financial literacy, which I'm passionate about now after what I've been through, giving them you know, the gift of music and art and then obviously sports. I grew up in a very rural, blue-collar town, and um, the gift of sports changed my life and my family's life. Home on three, one, two, three. Oh! If I can help that in any way uh, happen for another kid, I'm, I'm all in. Growing up in Mobile, Jake Peavy was drafted out of high school in 1999. Ironically, he played minor league ball for the Mobile Bay Bears before debuting for the Padres in 2002. After a career that featured a Cy Young Award and back-to-back -back World Series championships, the three-time All-Star looks back at his playing career fondly. First, I want to ask you about the number 44, um, why you chose that number, because you being from Mobile, oddly enough, like McCovey's from here, uh, Hank Aaron, 44, right. 44. Mm -hmm. So where'd you get that number from and why'd you choose that? Well, you know, it, it's just a lot of my life has happened organically and, and the older I get, the less I believe in coincidence. Mm -hmm. And, and, a, and a, it's not a, a great story other than I, I don't believe it was coincidence now looking back, mm -hmm. 22 is my father's number. Mm -hmm. Just uh, saw that in pictures, I think, and started wearing it as a child. Wore it through high school and then my entire minor league career. The day I knew I was going to the big leagues, um, there was just a a number in my locker that was number 44. Um, at that point in time I didn't really care think too much of it because I was just happy to have a, a number. I thought it was cool that it was double my childhood number and yeah. almost like okay you're graduating into this and then obviously I just smirked um, thinking about McCovey and thinking yeah. about Hank Aaron and getting to wear that number as those guys did from my hometown put some serious perspective on mm -hmm the life I was getting to live and the life those two lived in the times they lived it. Man, it's, uh, I, I can't believe I'm getting emotional, but thinking about where I'm from, mm. you know, there's a lot of racism and, and it wasn't always a proud thing for me to say I was from Alabama, mm. especially as I got moved on to the West Coast. Um, people thought you were racist. People thought uh, you, you lived in this trailer and you maybe dated your cousin. Yeah. <laughs> That's far from, you, you know, it's, um, so it's just stereotypical. Yeah. Yeah. So I just thought it was very ironic that I got to wear number 44 um, and uh, then as I, I got to San Francisco. Of course, he couldn't wear it there. Was retired yeah. <laughs> because of Willie McCovey. You're right. And I now, um, you know, in my career in number 22. Yeah. Oh, and Will I Clark's, came like full uh, circle. Yeah. <laughs> it's a, it's a, like I said, the older you get, the, the less you believe in coincidence. And right. um, it's amazing that number 44 was in my locker that day. Right. So I'll, I'll try to lighten it up because now I'm getting a little emotional yeah, too. Yeah, I'm sorry. But, uh, but <laughs> no, me too. I'm but a uh, baby. I was, I would, um, I did hear a funny story about how you uh, interacted. Nobody's ever asked me that question. Really? Nobody's ever. Uh, I always no, think about why, why people choose their numbers and how nobody, it happens. Yeah. Like everybody, I just always yeah. said it was in my locker. Like it just got given to me. And I know, I, you know. Oh, uh, I'm happy to be the first. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, I heard or read or heard something about the Roger Clemens interaction and how he gave you some advice. 
right. to stay, um, let's just say, get an edge or stay uncomfortable, which right. I think is hilarious. I love that story. Well, you know, I think everybody's always looking for an edge. And yeah. Growing up here, I, I idolized Roger mm -hmm. Clemens mm -hmm. and um, Greg Maddox to get a chance to play with these guys, interact with them, call mm -hmm. them friends right. was the most amazing thing that, that uh, I could ever imagine. Now you gotta think, me and Roger, the first time we got to spend time together was 2004. We were on this Japan tour. And it's not real motivating to, to play <laughs> at this point yeah. in time. You know, it's not like we yeah. really, uh, it matters if you win or lose. And, and Roger at this point in time says, I'll tell you what you can do. It will make you very uncomfortable and give you an edge over everybody. You take some of that icy hot and, and stick it down, um, <laughs> you know, in no man's land. Right. And, and you will not be comfortable, and, and that, that is a true story. Once you get comfortable and relaxed, there is uh, a way that you will get, will slip, and you right. let your guard yeah, down. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Roger was just uh, <laughs> trying to help me out, and, and look, it uh, it works, stuck right? around for a while. Yeah, you and kept I, that going I, for a little while, huh? And, uh, <laughs> Coming up, Jake and I look back at the 2013 World Series Championship in Boston, and of course, we made sure to find that duck boat. I've been involved in the zone for the past two years, and it's been a great experience. It's just basically another opportunity to be successful at your school. At three o'clock, I want to go straight home. When I go home, I just want to sleep, either play video games or chill with my friends, basically. The zone gives me an opportunity for at least an hour in there, or maybe two hours before school to get your work done and be done with it basically by the deadline. The staff, they always come around, tell people come in the zone, do your work. It's always good to have someone on your back to push you whenever you're down or someone to talk to whenever it's needed. Scholar Athletes, founded by Suffolk Construction Chairman and CEO John Fish, partners with public high schools to help close the opportunity gap for thousands of students in grades 9 through 12 across the Commonwealth. Scholar Athlete programs support success in school, as well as success in life. I'm here with the CEO and Chairman of Suffolk, and also more importantly, is the founder of Scholar Athletes, John Fish. Welcome, John. Jamie, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you very much. So first I want to start with your inspiration behind creating Scholar Athletes. When I was younger I was an athlete and athletics played a very, very big role in my life. And unfortunately I had a learning difference, I was a severe dyslexic back then and athletics sort of provided me with that sense of confidence, uh, that sense of security, that I wasn't dumb, that I could do something well and athletics was basically my classroom. And when you talk about the inspiration, is the motivation a little bit different, more personal, more? You know, it, it, it is. I, I would say the uh, idea of helping people has always been a very, very important uh, thing to me, Jamie. And I often believe that nobody uh, is successful on their own, and success is a relative thing. And to me, by working with people and helping them achieve their level of success or their definition of success makes all the difference in the world. And to me, it, it may, really makes you feel good as a, as a human being, that you can provide that opportunity for somebody that otherwise maybe not had that opportunity. This, this I think, is the greatest country western song of all time. It's Poncho and Lefty, a song by Towns Van Zandt. It's, uh, and it's um, how I started playing guitar, was learning, uh, learning this song with Tim Flannery, so. was certainly a memorable year in Boston. In April, the tragedy of the Boston Marathon bombings brought the city together in sorrow. A new slogan soon after helped to boost everyone's pride in an unlikely Red Sox run to the World Series made it a redemption story for both the team and the city. Living on the road, my friend. If we can talk about that team, 2013, you know, the team chemistry, tell me what you took in from that season. It's just hard to explain what that a little bit over a year uh, there meant to uh, me and my family. I came in in a very tough time when the city had, had 
faced utter devastation in, in the bombings and then um, to watch the Bruins get to the game six of Stanley Cup Finals and losing the Garden to the Blackhawks. You know, it was almost like at that point in time, the energy, you could feel the city just going, you know, we're not going to be denied. And, and that Boston team seemed to have something special from the time I walked in the room. But I feel like you fit right in. You really did. I mean, as much as your season was short in there, you fit right into the team chemistry. I felt like I was home. The guys in that room, I could go on and on. Just the starting staff I got to become a part of with John Lester, John Lackey, Ryan Dempster, Clay Buckholtz. Um, we're so much alike as people. We were all a little bit older and experienced. Right. To, uh, to watch David Ross come off almost a career-ending concussion to, uh, to end up catching those World Series games and Salta Lamakia having the year he had. And that's just the pitchers and, and the catchers. Mm -hmm. 2013, I know Boston has some championships before, but I don't know if anybody saw that coming. I'm going to move right on to the parade. What was that like? I immediately ran into a problem of having too many family members oh, that no. wasn't going to be able to make it on this duck the boat. The duck boat would have sank. Um, <laughs> and, and you know, that's, that's a very disappointing thing when you're just on life's biggest natural I high. I choose. And then you, uh, you only get so many. I, I um, you know, a lot of people make uh, a lot of conversation about us buying the duck boat. This, this was truly talked about in July, August with Johnny Gomes uh, originating this. Oh, really? This. Johnny Gomes, that. we had come here on an off day and spent uh, some time here and we had some different vehicles that we were getting around the property in. Mm -hmm. We're on the Alabama River and, and Johnny goes, when we win this World Series, you should buy the duck boat that you and your family ride through the city in and take it back to Southern Falls. It would be a perfect way to, to get around the property. We were setting this up for tours and foundation wow. with kids. And when that day came and I got to the field, I thought it was in my best interest to go ahead and try to make a deal for the duck boat. Um, I then talked to my driver and, and we talked to the owner of the company and um, was able to have a checkbook there on hand in my locker at Fenway. and, and uh, <laughs> Exchange, a uh, exchange a check for the title of that duck boat. And at that point in time, I felt like it had a little more leverage to get yeah. some more family members on. And the Boston Red Sox were so um, hospitable to all yeah. of us. And, and that day, my entire family got to get on that boat. And since we were at Jake's Ranch in Alabama, we just had to check out that duck boat. So how did you come up with the design for this? The mural is gorgeous. You know, I didn't even, I can't take any credit for this. My brother and, and uh, best friend Chad Sprinkle took it um, down to Mobile, and I, I really didn't have anything to do with the design of it other mm -hmm. than just they knew I wanted the year commemorated. Right. The Boston Strong logo will forever be entrenched <laughs> in, in, in yeah. my heart. So you don't take this out very much. The only outings that it has had have been here on the property to, right. uh, to, to give tours, but um, it's not going anywhere and it'll be a piece of our family and a uh, part say. of our family as long as these boys will, will have it around. Kindness, I suppose. I'll never forget stopping at the, the start finish mm -hmm. line there and in the city just truly going, you know, mm -hmm. Where, where you always walk by and, and say, this is where those bombs went off. I also want you to understand us as a people and a city and community. Um, this is where we overcame and, and, and did something very special later that year and showed the entire nation, the world, our togetherness. Look at you, girl. <laughs> From E to A, thank you very much. I'll tell you what, you can do a lot with the DNA. You can do a oh, lot with the DNA? Of course. You can go into E. Mm -hmm. Oh, you went to E. You're going back to A, you stay there. Okay. Fare thee well, fare thee well, fare thee well, my. Going to E, fairy fate. I'm going to Alabama to see some Susanna. Holly Wally doodle all day. Um, me and Waylon go a lot That's between awesome. two chords. Also awesome. between two chords. I'm gonna practice this like nobody's business. So Look, I, I think uh, next time you come back uh, to I'm ride in the duck boat and Mardi Gras parade, you're gonna play, you're gonna play you. on the <gasps> duck boat with us and during the parade. How about that? Fabulous. So I just want to say thank you for teaching me E and A, sort of, and thank you so much for the last two days. Some unbelievable southern hospitality. We appreciate it more than you know, you yeah. guys coming down, getting to um, see where we're from and, and, and uh, get a little bit of the culture. And um, yeah. y'all come back now, you hear? Yeah. <laughs> You're doing some great work here. <laughs> so how about a little Sweet Home Alabama? Is there any A or E chords in Sweet Home Alabama? We should have taught you D, C, and G. Oh, D, C, and oh G. Oh my gosh. Sweet Home 
Alabama. And some people say roll tide, roll, Jamie. Oh, roll tide. Well, the skies are so blue. Sweet home, Alabama. Lord, I'm coming home to you. Here I come.